Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Noor Dean and I am a medical student studying at the University of East Anglia in the UK. Ever since I started my YouTube channel, people have been asking me to do med content. Med content is big right now. There's people who are in medical school, there's people who want to be in medical school, and there's people in the middle who don't want to do medicine, but are just interested in their life. And so, I'm a man of the people. We're going to provide that. And I thought a good video to start with is why I became a medical student. Why do I want to be a doctor? Someone like me, who's already done a degree, a grad, a four year degree. Why do I want to go back to uni for five more years? What's the point? What benefit am I getting from it? This is the video that will explain not just my mentality, but kind of the reasons why you would want to do medicine, fresh out of school or as a grad student. Let's dive in. So my life really began when I was around 14 years old. I lived in Syria. We lived in the UK for most of our life. When I was 12, my dad said, pack up and go into Syria. So we went to Syria. The first two years, it was blissful. So peaceful, the streets were clean. We would meet up with our family members. We'd have sleepovers with our cousins where all 20 of us would just be laid on the floor and the mattresses. It was so beautiful and peaceful and lovely. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, a war just erupted. There was an Arab spring going on. All the different Arab countries decided, this year, let's riot, let's protest. Let's kick out our dictators. And Syria was one of those countries that protested. And unfortunately, that led to a 10 year war. And things are gonna get a little bit dark here, but my mentality wasn't too good at the time. Imagine being 14 years old, going to sleep and not knowing if you will ever wake up. Imagine hearing dogs barking and thinking, is that someone coming to get you? Every single night. Imagine going to school and on the way there, a car bomb goes off. The city is on fire and you're walking through that city to get to school. And when you get to school, you can't go home. You just have to sit at school and listen to the lectures and answer the questions and, and do the tests because that's just how it is. That's just life. That was my reality. That was my reality and not just mine, but everybody who's ever lived in a war zone or anyone who's ever lived in a difficult situation where their country is literally burning that is how you think that is your normal and i only had it for a year and a half that was all a year and a half that was all i experienced of the war there are children who were born a few years before the war all they know is war they know nothing of peace they don't understand what it's like to be safe that was the situation that we had in Syria. That was how I lived. It's something, when I think about it here, living in the UK, I can't even imagine what it was like back then. That was really when my personality was made. This person you see in front of you, he was born out of the ashes of whatever happened to him in Syria. Crazy times. And I didn't even have it that bad. There are people that have had it much worse than me. But the fact is, living in Syria did something to my head. Nevertheless, despite living in a war zone, I was a top student. Despite not knowing Arabic a year before, I achieved one of the highest grades in the Syrian GCSE. Everyone was so proud of me and I was proud of myself. But then once again, everything changed. The war did not look like it was gonna end anytime soon. My dad said, pack your bags, we are going back to England. And that came as a complete shock. I thought I was gonna be living there for the rest of my life. And considering everything that had happened, I was a very happy guy to be leaving. And so we came back to England. In a way, I was angry. I was angry at my people for the war that they had created in their country. I was angry at my parents for dragging me and my siblings into that war. I was angry that my education was disrupted. Mentally, I wasn't where I wanted to be. And so I rebelled. I rebelled hard. From early days, my dad wanted me to be a doctor, being the oldest in the family. And my dad's an orthopedic surgeon. So I had been groomed from young to be a doctor. So my dad wasn't with us in Syria for a lot of the time because we feared for his safety as a foreign doctor. So he stayed here. When he re-entered my life, and he started telling me what to do. He started telling me to study and to work hard. I had some sort of resentment towards that attitude, you know. I felt like I'd been abandoned in Syria. And then suddenly, just like that, we're gonna, we're gonna be pals again. And 
maybe I wasn't as respectful as I should have been, but I rebelled hard. I refused to listen to my dad or my mom. And when they would tell me to study, I did not study. But when A-levels came, I flopped my A-levels. I did not want to be a doctor and I was going to do anything to sabotage my chances at going to med school. And so when it came to my A-levels, I got A, B, C, D. The A was in Arabic. With B, C, D, you can't do anything with it. I was happy. I wanted to take a gap year. Yeah, I can't believe you said that because that really reminds me of this time on my gap year. Let's just stop a minute and just imagine what was going through my head? Someone who did so well in their Syrian GCSE, despite knowing a year of Arabic, comes to England, flops their A-levels? There was something that wasn't right. And I don't know what it was. I don't like making excuses. I'm always going to blame myself for what happened. But nevertheless, something changed me in Syria. And I was not the same person that had left. And when I sabotaged my A-levels, I was happy. I didn't even want to go to uni. I wanted to start my own business and that was my plan. I had a job as a healthcare assistant, which is basically just helping nurses, helping patients in the hospital. This gave me some money and I was going to start my own business. But my parents did not let me stay home. In Asian communities, not going to uni is a stigma. And if I'd have stayed at home, then in my parents' eyes, I would have been a failure. I decided to pick neuroscience because I thought it would be interesting. Unfortunately, things were about to get even worse. I was the first person in my family in the UK to go to university. I didn't understand how to apply to uni, what clearing was, what a foundation year was. I got offered a neuroscience degree from the University of Leicester with a foundation year. I didn't know what clearing was. If I'd gone through clearing, I wouldn't have had to do a foundation year. I wouldn't have had to waste a year of my life. Nevertheless, I had no clue. And when I turned up and they told me, yeah, your course is four years. You have to do an extra year to make up for those A-levels that you messed up. I was so angry. Again, I thought I was finally going in the right place, listening to my parents, doing the right thing, and then I have to do another year on top of it all. So angry. I became a very negative person and I refused to talk to my family. I refused to talk to anybody about it. I was just wallowing in despair, in, despair, in, in anger. anger. All through that foundation year, I just scraped through. I wouldn't attend lectures. I wouldn't go to uni. I wouldn't do practicals. I wouldn't even try. I had to reset two exams, one of them twice. To go from somebody who was a top student to come to England to flop my A-levels and then foundation year to fail two exams in a foundation year. It was too much for me to handle. I wanted to drop out. I wanted to run away as fast as possible. I wasn't about that life. What do you mean? I didn't even want to be here in the first place. My mom was just like, you have to go to uni. My dad said, you have to go to uni. I didn't want to be here. Why am I here if I'm not going to do well? I wanted to run away. My mentality was such that if I had a problem, I would run from it. I wouldn't try and fix it. I wouldn't try and change myself. I would run from my problem and that was that. But my parents, they stood by me. They said to me, you've started something, you have to finish it. I said to them, no, I don't even want to be here. They said, listen, no one forced you to flop your A levels. No one forced you to go to uni. You did those things. You have to bear the consequences. And that's when I understood it was all my fault. I can't blame Syria. I can't blame my family. I can't blame anybody for the decisions that I have made. No one ever forced me to do anything. It was all decisions that I made myself. And when I realized that, everything changed. I was overweight at the time, around 100 kilograms. I started going to the gym. I started finding better friends. I cut out all the bad habits. I started studying more. And then I started to read. I realized that my attention span had gone. So I started retraining myself to, to focus on things. Focus. I'd been slacking with my faith and my religion, so I started getting back into it, praying on time. I started dropping the bad habits and picking up the good ones. In one year, I became unrecognizable. People who would look at me in disgust before wanted to be my friends. And everyone wanted to know what was my secret? What did I do differently? Very simply, the secret is your mindset. It's all about how you interact with the world and how you perceive everything. And the most important thing is that you take responsibility for your life actions. 
for your choices. It's all you. No one forces you to do anything. I chose every path in my life and this is where it's got me. At the end of my degree, I realized that I didn't want to go into neuroscience. Yes, I had passed my degree. I had got a 2-1 and that was fine. But I didn't want to pursue neuroscience. So what would I do? That's when I started learning about skills and I learned that to succeed in life, you have to have a very powerful talent stack, a unique one, so unique that no one else can compete with you. And the way I came to this skill was by looking at myself, analyzing my strengths, my weaknesses. My strengths are communication. I like working with people. I have an analytical and a logical brain. I like problem solving. And all of those things put together showed me very clearly the path I was gonna take. When I told my mom, she was in awe. She was shocked. How can you tell me this? She said to me. And I said to her, that's just how I feel. Sometimes you have to trust your gut. My gut told me to study medicine. And after all that, my mum was just, she was happy. She said to me, I always knew you'd come back to medicine because for the person you are, medicine is perfect for you. And if you're watching this and you have good communication skills, if you're a problem solver, if you're, a, if you're like helping people, you know, I know these are generic things, but medicine might be perfect for you and you might not even realise it. When I told my dad, his face dropped. He thought I was joking. I said, no, dad, seriously, I know I want to do medicine. Do you know what he said to me? <laughs> he said, you have one month to do your UK cat. Go and study now. Just like that. Just like that. He, he, he was happy. He was, I don't know what he was. I'm, I'm sure he was ecstatic, but that's just how my dad is. He just told me to go study straight away, which is fair enough. I only had a month. <laughs> I don't know how I was going to do it in time, but that's the point where I applied. And that was that. And there was one more hurdle to jump over before I would be a medical student. Having done a four year degree in neuroscience, I was sick of lectures. I did not want to go to any more lectures. If I was going to go back to uni for five years, that would be nine years overall. I needed a degree that would challenge me how I wanted to be challenged. I didn't want to sit in lectures and learn about facts. I wanted to be on the front line, working with patients in a clinical setting, learning these skills and developing my personality as a doctor. And there was only one medical school in the entire United Kingdom that offered a course like that. You get to see patients from year one. You get to go to placement so hospital and GP placement from year one. You get to learn clinical skills like knee exam, hip exam, how to read x-rays from the first year. No other medical school offers this except the University of East Anglia in Norwich in the UK. And that is why I applied here. Honestly, the best medical school in the UK if you want to be a doctor. Not an academic, not a researcher, a doctor, a good doctor. You want to come to UEA. My journey had a lot of twists and turns. And there's a verse in the Quran, the Islamic holy book, that says, They plan and Allah plans. And Allah has the best of plans. At the end of the day, never in my right mind would I ever thought that I would have gone to medicine. If you asked me when I was in foundation year, if you'd asked me when I was in my A-levels, I would never have agreed. But here we are. Sometimes you get a feeling in your gut in your instincts and you just have to trust it and you have to go with it and that's what I did and I still don't know if medicine really is my passion but it's something I know I'll be good at and if it's something that you know you'll be good at then just give it a try if you have any questions about medicine or getting into medicine or what to do as a medical student then please email me or message me on Instagram that's all from me today I hope I've shown you a different perspective of my journey to medicine and I hope this helps you make a decision whether you want to be a medical student or not. If you found this content in any way enjoyable, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Nouruddin and I will see you later.